Come on into the studio with me, artist, and let's embark on this lesson I'm calling Great Beginnings with Pan Pastels. I think you're gonna love it. And in this lesson, I'm using unsanded pastel paper. It's much more affordable than other pastel papers and works great with Pan Pastels. Also, you'll be learning how to work with some of their fun painting tools. In this lesson, you will learn some mark making techniques using the special tools from Pan Pastel. These tools can be used similar to painting with paint brushes, and it's surprising how much detail you can actually achieve. These are just some of the things you'll be learning and oh, so much more. So welcome to the studio and let's get started. Let me show you this neat trick for how to place your pan pastels directly on your painting board or surface. I just use one of the pan pastel palettes. This is the one that holds 10 of the compacts and I clip it to my board with a large clip. I taped it down at the bottom just to keep it from bowing up. This makes it very convenient to paint with the applicators that's really just like painting with paint brushes. And if you're a patron of mine, I give you all of the color numbers of the pan pastels that I used for the underpainting. And I will also be using some regular stick pastels after the underpainting is complete. And as I mentioned, I am going to be painting on an unsanded surface. This is the Canson Mitons, it's called, it's a French word. And I'm just using a kind of a cream or beige color. And I'll be working on the smooth side. If you have a pad of Canson paper like this, the pages are uh, adhered in the pad and the smooth side is always on the back side. So that's the smoother surface that I'll be using. You could use different surfaces for the pan pastel application, but I would recommend a surface that's not too textured. I would recommend either pastel matte, perhaps the color fix made by Art Spectrum. I would use the smooth if you have it and also anything that's a finer grit. And if you don't, even have any pan pastels. You can of course do this lesson with regular pastels as well and just blend some of your initial layers. Oh, let's talk about this reference image. I loved the colors in this image and I got it from pmp-art.com. It's really a great place to get copyright free reference images. And I'm going to be changing this up a bit. I'm gonna make the structure a bit smaller, a more to the right and uh, just give my own little artistic spin on the composition a bit. So I'm using a Prismacolor New Pastel. It's just kind of a taupe color to get a sketch in. This is gonna be very basic. Let me speed this up. As you can see, I raised the horizon line a bit higher in the painting and thus the building as well. I'm making the building a little smaller. And when buildings and structures are far away, uh, we often have a tendency to over detail them. And that's not really true to how things work. They get less detailed the further away they are and it won't be as painterly. So resist the urge to give too much detail to this structure. So I did keep it kind of similar, um, a similar perspective and a little shed kind of on the left side and just really basic to get started. Now, if you have some of these applicator tools, the little tips you put on, they're very affordable. So just buy new ones if you want, but I often flip them over if the front side is too dirty, I flip them over and use the clean back side. But again, use paper towels to clean them off too. Now this is the only sponge tool that I use um, that's larger. It's just the oval sponge. You can actually wash these and dry them, but I like to just um, clean them with a paper towel, especially for something like this. Now I'm using the magenta extra dark and the violet shade for this section here. I'm just getting in, and it kind of mixes to become a brown. I'm just kind of getting in that lower portion that's going to be like buried flowers. I'm making vertical marks and don't worry about this, just keep it loose and gestural. This is just the underpainting and use whatever darks that you have. I like this little bit of violet in it and some of the magenta. Um, but again, you can get creative. As I always say, use what you have. I think you get the idea. Let me speed this up a bit. So the same principles apply as the other painting principles. You keep more vertical marks when you're close up. And now I'm gonna add a little of the white. This is how I'm making a tent. Remember a tent is just a, a shade lighter. So I just put a little white on my little sponge and uh, then I can add a little more of the other color to get a middle value. And notice my strokes got a little more horizontal to give that idea of a flatness to a field beyond. So now I've got a little bit of a value um, transition and for the trees, I'm using the chromium oxide green extra dark and grabbing a little bit of that ultramarine blue extra dark. So again, I use some of the extra darks to get in my um, darker values 
as I always say, things in the foreground are darker. Things that are vertical, like these trees, are darker. Now, I found that the ultramarine blue is one of the darkest darks. Um, so I'm using that to get at some of the base of these trees. And right now, it looks really... Um, um, ah, just kind of chunky, you know, the way these applicators apply. But think of this just as you do with applying an underpainting um, with regular, I keep calling them stick pastels. I don't know really the best way to distinguish them between the pans. But um, keep in mind that the underpainting, it's okay if it looks just a little unfinished. It's actually better. Now, I added a little of the titanium white um, to my sponge with the ultramarine blue on it, um, and it lightened it up. Why would I do that? Well, I want those trees behind this building to feel further away. And so if you add a little bit of white, it will make it feel that way. Now, I'm using my applicator. Remember, I got the clean side on the back side of it there, and I'm getting that pretty tint. This is the phthalo blue tint. Again, if you don't have this tint, uh, in the pan pastels, any blue that you have, you could add some white to it. If you have a pure blue, you could just add some white to it and it'll lighten it up. And here in a second, you'll see me add a color that's the pure form of ultramarine blue. I have it on the uh, color guide as just the name. I forgot to add the actual picture of it. But I end up changing the sky a bit more to turquoise and you'll see me do that later. But the concept here is that the value of things in the sky get a little bit darker as they go up to the heavens. And now I've grabbed one of the tools that has more of a squared off edge at the end. And the reason I switched to this tool is because I wanna get those edges and um, more linear marks that are in the structure. So notice how I just turned it and I'm just pulling down underneath the roof on the side of the building. Now the sun in this particular photo, I'm imagining anyway, is coming from the upper right side. So that part of the front of the building is going to be darker. Now I just added a little bit of the white right to the tool without even cleaning it off because I wanna keep some of that darker color on it. And I lightened up this left side of the building. And that's because the right side of the building is getting more light. Now I'm using the same tool to get in this pretty, um, rich, gorgeous, reddish, permanent red, extra dark. Again, if you just have a red, you can add some black to it. And I'm giving the idea of um, a, a rusty roof, you know, like a metal roof. And so I'm just still kind of able to shape things with this little um, chisel type of tool. Now I'm pulling up on it. I didn't want the lines to look so uh, uniform. And so you can always blend so nicely using these tools with pan pastel. I got some dark underneath that little shed that's sticking out. It would be really in shadow. And now I'm getting some of the greens. This green is the permanent green. It's one of the pure colors. Again, it's not a shade. It's not darker or it's not a tint. It's not a little lighter. It's that medium pure color. And I'm using it on the kind of top right areas of the trees to lighten up the value and warm up the color from the sun um, shining on them. Now I got that ultramarine blue again and a little bit of that Hansa yellow shade. You can see me actually grabbing that one to the lower left there. And uh, I didn't want it to be quite so ultramarine blue. So I'm warming it up with a little of that Hansa yellow. Um, so again, this is the Hansa yellow shade, just a little darker than the pure form of Hansa yellow. So I'm just giving a little bit more of this warmth to some of the areas of the trees. And, you know, I'm gonna be adding the stick pastels later to this, but you know, you could complete a full painting just using pan pastels. I just usually can't resist the urge to get a little bit more of that um, vibrant color. I do think you can get definitely more striking mark making using the stick pastels um, than you can with just the pan pastels. So now I just added a little bit more of that ultramarine extra dark, um, just to get a little more depth and to give an indication of maybe a little trail kind of leading the viewer back that's the ultramarine dark again too um, and uh, giving almost like a little hill uh, portion to this so I just kind of get rather intuitive when I'm painting these things you can see it's different from the reference image but I am using it for inspiration there's a little of the ultramarine blue lightened it up a little bit in the distance um, 
from the foreground uh, comparatively. And uh, I'm still trying to get uh, more dark in the foreground. And you'll see me use the regular stick pastels later for that. Now here's where I am adding the turquoise. I decided I thought the turquoise would complement some of the uh, rusty colors that I'll be adding later in some of the flowers and uh, grass colors. And I just love turquoise. So I'm using my little rounded applicator again, just to kind of blend some of the turquoise in. And don't worry if it looks a little chunky at this point, you can always just kind of smooth it out later. I wanted to brighten up the side of that building, um, give that feeling of light. And I used the rounded end to get an idea of light hitting on some of the upper grooves of that metal roof. I used the chiseled edge one again to get a little bit of a shadow right there too, underneath the little uh, eaves of the building. And see that building is starting to look three-dimensional now. Notice those fine little details I could get with the applicator tools. So I'm getting more of that extra dark um, ultramarine blue at the base of some of these trees. That tree there is the closest to the viewer, so it's gonna have a little more dark. Now, are you amazed at how much I'm able to do on unsanded paper? All of this has been done on unsanded Canson paper. So I think this is exciting for beginner artists because it's really an affordable surface. And pan pastels, like I mentioned in my last video, you can, um, um, I'll talk about what I'm doing now in a minute. You can get just a few of them and make your own shades and tents. Check out the video again, previous to this one. Um, so I'm just still playing around with this foreground, um, getting in a little bit more of the dark. Now I'm starting to add some of the greens. That was that um, permanent green I'm grabbing with this little sponge tool. I'm speeding it up because it's kind of monotonous. Um, the little rounded sponge tool. It's got kind of a curved in, and I'm just kind of getting in little grass ideas or shapes. Now, now I grab some of that Hansa yellow shade. It's just a pretty um, yellowy kind of greenish. I know it's called Hansa yellow shade, but it's got that little greenish tint to it. Um, so I'm getting some uh, horizontal marks to give an idea of little flat areas in the distance. So this is just kind of a, a fun stage to give that feeling of a field. And I haven't done a whole lot with that really dark um, bottom portion yet because I'm going to be adding flowers and grasses and elements to that. So now I'm using that little tool. I did brush it off on the paper towel. I use that, there you go, you see it there. I clean it off with the paper towel and now I've got a little bit of that tint that I had. What color was that again? It was the phthalo blue tint. I added a little more of that ultramarine blue up in the upper sky, so it did kind of combine with that turquoise um, nicely. And now can you see that we're actually, it's starting to look like a painting. Um, I've slowed it down to real time again, so I can show you. This is another tool. This one has the little triangular tip, and I'm using it to get some of that permanent red, extra dark, reinforced in some of the deeper grooves of the metal roof structure. Also, uh, just a note on painting uh, structures with a roof. Uh, it's better to keep it a little bit um, I don't want to say crooked. You want it perspectively correct, but roofs aren't always, especially an old barn kind of structure like this, they're not going to be so perfect. So have a little ripple here or there. I put a little more white on the tip to reestablish some of those lighter parts of the roof that are catching a little bit more of the sunlight. And uh, again, can you see how it's really, just with pan pastels and regular Canson unsanded paper, we're really getting a lot accomplished. And now my goal is just to kind of fine tune a couple of things. Some of it is um, that backside of the roof, a little bit of the red kind of showing. And uh, I also add a little bit of purple to the side of the building um, that right, is that purple? No, I added a little taupe there, but uh, I'm adding a little bit of that violet shade. You know how I like purples and shadows. And there is a little bit of a shadow being cast um, underneath the roof. It was at this stage that I felt like my underpainting had enough information and I chose to use some regular pastels to complete the painting. I could have continued with the pan pastels, but I really wanted some of that vibrancy and punch for some of these flowers. I just keep a set of pastels near me that's kind of like where I put all of my pastels after many paintings and I end up with a nice 
colorful palette to choose from. Keep in mind, this is unsanded Canson paper. I was really quite surprised at how many layers I was able to get on. Now, if I had done an underpainting with regular stick pastels, it would have taken up much more tooth of the paper and I couldn't have gotten as many layers. So that's another advantage about pan pastels is they don't take up quite as much of the tooth of whatever surface you're working on, even an unsanded surface like this one. So I am really just creating a nice warm uh, base for some of these flowers. Notice in the reference image, just those beautiful golden colors in the field, in the foreground, also some of those just burgundy kind of flowers and yes I am making my foreground quite dark and right now the base of the trees and the foreground trees dark but I'm going to use my layering capability to add the highlights on top of this and that's typically how we work with soft pastels similar to uh, oil and acrylic is getting our darks in first and then layering um, by value, by lightening things up as we go. Um, I'm just giving the building a little character here with a little window and uh, a door in the front, a little window. And later in the painting, I decide to totally make the building smaller. And I did that just by brushing it out. So this version that you're seeing here on the Monet Cafe channel is uh, substantially sped up um, at this phase when I start adding the regular pastels. Um, if you're a patron of mine on my Patreon page, uh, you know you've already got, you get early content when you're a patron, you get commercial free content, and you get all of my commentary, slower speeds, lots of goodies. I get to see your recreations and it's just, a, I love it. I love my Patreon family. We have such a special, special group of people. And let me take a quick little commercial break here and tell you how to become a patron. Of course, it supports this channel too to keep the free videos coming. You get extra instruction as a patron and so much more. So come on and join the family. It's only $5 a month and you can cancel at any time. All right, back to the lesson. I think you'll be able to see now my process of why I got my darks down first. I am, right now I'm burying some flowers. I chose my vantage point for this composition rather to be standing up straight and looking down as you kind of see in the reference image. One of those um, vantage points I love where you're almost like laying down in the grass and looking through the flowers back to this uh, distant field and building. So that's why my uh, foreground is darker and you can see how I'm gradually layering these beautiful autumn colors on top of the darker uh, foreground and adding some fun little leaf shapes and um, just sprinkling in some flowers. I loved the fact that the reference image had like some dark seed pods in certain areas, so I exaggerated that a bit. And I liked the painting at this stage, but in my typical fashion, I fiddled around with this painting a lot. I was fascinated with how many layers I was able to get on an unsanded surface. And like I said at the beginning of this video, I brushed out the building, I made it smaller, and decided to let the flowers be the focus point so I added some Queen Anne's lace type of flowers and changed the scene a bit but look at all the versatility you have and starting with pan pastels is a fun and a great beginning and I plan on having another tutorial this month where I will use primarily pan pastels rather than just for an underpainting again become a patron if you would like to support this channel and get the extra goodies subscribe to this channel please leave me a comment and hit that like button it helps this video get shared by YouTube. All right, everyone. God bless and happy painting.